Uh, well, thank you everyone for tuning in. Uh, my name is Michael and I'm the gallery director here at the Arts HQ Gallery. Um, we today are talking with an artist, uh, John Clark, who will be uh, one of four featured artists in our upcoming show, Expressions of the West Valley, uh, which opens October 16th. And so, uh, John, thank you for being here and thank you for talking with us and, and allowing us to get you uh, get to know you a little bit better. Thank you for inviting me. Yeah, not a problem. Uh, and for you, those of you that are tuning in, hopefully you can hear us. We are, you know, being safe in the gallery here today. And so we're going to keep our, our mask on. Um, uh, so John, let's uh, kind of just jump right in. I uh, have had the p pleasure of, of viewing some of your work um, uh, through your website and I know that you've done uh, quite a few different things like landscape and portrait, but uh, here we have this theme of, of aviation and I know you have a, um, a connection uh, to this theme in particular. So uh, do you want to tell us a little bit about your, your history um, as an artist and as, as a, a person? <laughs> yeah. Well, I uh, was interested in uh, art, I think at the age of six. Mm -hmm. I lived in Chicago at the time, hmm. and the story I like to tell is that um, we lived in an apartment house uh, near Midway Air Airport, hmm. and uh, I used to go out on the back uh, porch of the apartment house and watch these DC-3 airplanes hmm. fly overhead on their final approach to uh, Midway Airport. Mm -hmm. And I was always fascinated about the fact that uh, they would kind of like bank as they made their final approach on the, uh, to the runway. Mm -hmm. And I could never figure out how an airplane turned. Mm -hmm. I thought the wings used to kind of like slide around. You know, <laughs> if they wanted to go left, the wings would slide left and right, they would slide right. Yeah. So I didn't know about ailerons and rudders and all of that kind of stuff, mm -hmm. you know. So that, that kind of sparked my interest in aviation and that was when I was like six years old. Mm, that's amazing. I bet it, it was loud living <laughs> behind an air park. Yeah. Can't yeah, imagine yeah. that. And so uh, when, you, uh, when you got older, uh, you know, what, what happened? Uh, I think the next big milestone in terms of interest in subject matter was when I was 11. I walked into the library. I was living in Milwaukee at the time. Mm -hmm. And I walked into the library and um, went over to the science section. And uh, there was a book that I happened to run across, it was called The Conquest of Space. Mm. The author was Willie Lay, but what fascinated me about that book were the illustrations by a guy whose name was Chesley Bonestell. Mm. And he had a series of marvelous outer space paintings in that book, wow. The Conquest of Space. And I was so in awe with, with those uh, the images and paintings that he had of Saturn and Jupiter and the, and the stars and the, you know, things like that in the galaxy, mm -hmm. that, that always stuck with me and that kind of prompted me to be interested in uh, outer space. Wow, yeah. I know as a kid when I was growing up, I was really into comic books and so that was my first introduction to, to, to art really, because I used to recreate what I was uh, reading in comic books and then I started developing my own characters and I just kind of carried that with me into college. I did a lot of figure drawing. I uh, got into portrait photography. Um, so it's just interesting how those things stick with you. Um, when you were a kid, did you find yourself, you know, drawing pictures of airplanes or, uh, you know, painting pictures of outer space, anything like that? Well, the funny thing is that I never took art that seriously. Mm. Um, I used to draw a little bit, but not a lot. Right. And uh, it wasn't actually until 1968 um, when I got out of the Air Force. Hmm. I went to Marquette University and I enrolled in uh, mechanical engineering. Hmm. Well, I stayed there for two years and found out really that I wasn't prepared in terms of a background hmm. uh, for engineering. So I was at kind of an impasse, you know, I was thinking like, well, what am I going to do now? You hmm. know, you're 28 years old and and uh, you thought you wanted to be an engineer and then all that went up in smoke. Yeah. And I said, well, I could, you know, go to, to my other interest, which was art. Mm -hmm. But I said, well, art is easy. 
Well, that was one of the most asinine things I think I've ever, <laughs> statements I ever made in my life. It's not know? easy. <laughs> yeah, not easy at all. So what I did was I ended up going to the University of Wisconsin and enrolling in the, um, in the art department over there and finished up uh, there, which is a whole nother story. But yeah, yeah that's how the, the seriousness of getting into art started in uh, about 1970. Wow. And so, uh, when you went to college, what, what did you study? I studied uh, drawing and painting, mm -hmm. and uh, I uh, finished up with a BFA, an MA, and an MFA in wow. drawing and painting. Wow, yeah. that's a lot. <laughs> yeah, so. And then after, so after graduating, um, did you just continue on doing uh, full-time art, or did you do other jobs? Well, I was at a crossroads because, unfortunately, I had thought going to the university to study art that they would teach you how to draw and paint. Mm. And this is where my bias comes in, mm -hmm. uh, in terms of the, the way I look at the art world. Mm. They don't teach you, at least at that, at that time, they didn't teach you how to draw and paint in, in, at the school I was at, the university. Interesting. It was more, we're, they were caught up in the er, era of um, contemporary art, mm. abstract painting. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was only myself and one other kid in the whole art department that were realists. Mm -hmm. So we, we had a tough time, you know, trying to uh, get through that because most of the work that we were doing was not accepted. Uh, we, were out, we were way out of the mainstream. Mm -hmm. But what happened to me finally was I was so despondent that I remember to this day sitting on the porch of my house in Milwaukee thinking, what am I going to do now? And I heard about a guy that was in Minneapolis. He was a teacher and his name was Richard Lack. And he was one of the people that were starting up a new school, school study program called an atelier. Hmm. And, and basically these guys went back and started teaching students how to draw and paint like the old masters did. Wow. And so I went up to Minneapolis and I met Mr. Lack had chatted with him and told him, you know, how disappointed I was with what I had had not learned in mm -hmm. college. And he said, uh, well, you know, one of my students is in Milwaukee. And his name was Jim Pro. He says he's opened, a, he's opened a, an atelier in Milwaukee. He says you should go and see him. So long story short, I went and saw Jim. We became friends. And um, I studied under Jim for about two years. Mm -hmm. His classes were becoming so large, we had about 20 kids, uh, people in his class, that he, and I was doing work on the level that he thought I could take over teaching some of his classes. So I did wow. that for 10 years. Wow. So that's where I really got my training about how to, how to learn how to draw and paint mm -hmm. uh, in that old, the style of the old masters. Wow. So that's my story. Yeah, I love that story, that's amazing. <laughs> So when you, um, I know that uh, one of the main things, themes that I've seen by you is this aviation theme. Uh, is there other things that inspire or inform uh, your, your work or what you're producing? Well, I think once you, you have the basis of knowing how to uh, draw and paint, uh, mm -hmm. your subject matter just automatically expands. Mm -hmm. I always said, for example, there's very little difference between drawing a banana or painting a banana mm -hmm. and painting a fuselage on an airplane. Interesting. You know, they're both abstract shapes. Mm -hmm. And so it's just a matter of modeling and coloring and things like mm -hmm. that. But all the information and the skills that you need to paint a banana, mm -hmm. you can very easily paint an airplane. Mm -hmm. And the same thing with, uh, you know, landscapes and porches and things like mm -hmm. that. It's all about proportion and um, color and value and all those things. So subject matter is really irrelevant, really. Yeah. Yeah. I've, I've, I haven't heard that before. I, I do a lot of uh, like charcoal drawings mm. of, of the human figure. And I've always uh, just automatically told myself that that's what I'm trained to do. That's what I know how to do. Mm. And so I probably couldn't do a landscape or probably couldn't do a, an airplane. But um, what you're saying is that if you know the basic concepts of like modeling, then you should be able to do that. Sure. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I like that. Yeah. It's inspiring. Um, what is 
what does the process of painting look like for you? Are you, um, do you use, you know, photographic images? Or are you painting, you know, the images that you see in your, your head? Uh, what does that look for, look for you to get started doing a painting? Um, it's a combination of a lot of different things. Sometimes I work in photographs. Mm -hmm. um, if I, I rarely do portrait work, but when I do, usually I'm restricted to um, working from a photograph. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I probably like you in, in college, took life drawing and all that kind of thing, mm -hmm. but you know, I don't have a, a big interest in doing that nowadays. Right. So photographs, certainly you use those. Uh, but the other method that I've been using for my aviation and space paintings is a uh, method that was um, actually um, started back in the, uh, I think it was 1455 uh, by a guy by the name of Bruno Lesky. Mm -hmm. He's the guy that basically reinvented perspective. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was a uh, friend of mine who was an aviation artist that picked up on that and I learned it from him. Mm -hmm. and, and in essence, what it is, and just to be brief, it's, it's the ability to stand and look at an object from a certain distance mm -hmm. and to be able to create that object as you see it at, at that distance in three dimensions. Mm -hmm. So if you have, for example, a, um, a line drawing of an airplane that has a top view, a front view, and a side view, mm -hmm. you can choose wherever you want to look at that airplane from and reconstruct the airplane, how it looks at that particular distance. Yes. So that's the same thing that Brunelleschi did, you know, standing in front of the uh, um, the buildings in uh, Florence when he uh, developed that method of uh, linear perspective. So it's applied to this and it, it gives you a lot of flexibility because you're not locked into an image of a photograph from a certain angle. You can choose wherever you want to look at an object and draw it. Mm -hmm. Right. And I believe you're primarily working in oils, is that correct? Right. Is there any other uh, art form that you have uh, dabbled in or that you do uh, in combination or are you just strictly sticking to, to, to oils? Well, it's funny how I got into oils. Mm -hmm. you know, that, that was not my first medium. Mm -hmm. I remember, again, a funny story in a way. It was I was in, at, in college and uh, <clears throat> it was an introduction to painting class. Mm -hmm. And I'm sitting in there in the class and I'm painting a, a painting of, a, of the moon. Mm -hmm. And the professor comes in and he says, uh, he looks over my shoulder and he says, Mr. Clark, he says, um, what, what, what medium are you using? I said, these are acrylics. He said, Mr. Clark, this is an oil painting class. <laughs> <laughs> so I was forced to uh, get into learning how to paint from oils, but I never looked back after that. Yeah, that's yeah. one way of doing it. <laughs> <laughs> I actually took an oil painting class and I I, yeah, I couldn't wrap my head around it. I didn't have the patience for it. Yeah. Uh, but it's it's beautiful. You get this beautiful uh, glow to your images, and yeah. I love it. Um, so, uh, where have you shown in uh, here in the valley? Where have you shown your work? Um, not a lot of places, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, here, for sure. The uh, West Valley Art Museum. And then there was a, um, a show I had over at the, uh, what's the technical school, West Mech? West Mech, yes, yeah. down the street here. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I think basically those three, those three places. Mm. There's not a lot of interest, quite frankly, and in, in I don't think in what I do anyway, so I don't, I don't expect, you know, to be going into galleries and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. what, uh, what about outside of Arizona? Um, Gallery-wise, uh, well, I've been here now for um, 18 years, so mm. that's pretty much Arizona. In Milwaukee, um, you know, r some of the regular galleries there, but uh, mm -hmm. between those two places, I think that's pretty much it. Mm. I, haven't, I haven't really done a lot of exhibitions in galleries, mm -hmm. per se. All right. That means we got to get you showing some, some <laughs> places. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, let's... Talk about uh, of all of the artwork that you have created. Is there a, a piece or maybe a series in particular that you would uh, want to be uh, known for? You know, years, years and years after you're gone, 
we want to, we're looking at um, a body of your work and is there a piece or, or a series of it in particular that you, you know, want to be front and center? You want to say like, this is, this defines who I am as an artist. I thought about that uh, yesterday when I was reading your questions and mm -hmm. uh, the answer probably would be, I can't. Mm -hmm. uh, the closest I could come to answering that was uh, a quip that I heard by uh, some famous uh, American artist when he was asked, what is your best painting? Mm. You know, and, and what would, what, what, similar to what you were asking, but he, this one was couched in the, in the way of saying, what's your best painting? And I thought his answer was pretty informative. He says, my next one, <laughs> so. I love that, yeah. I'll, I'll leave it at that. That's something to strive <laughs> for, yeah. I know I, I, in, in my, own, I guess, career as an artist, I have some work that I'm just really, really proud of that I, you know, worked really hard on, uh, that, that was received really well. Um, and then there's some pieces that I, like, never shown before. And so it's, it would be easy for me to say that I want to be known for the, those pieces that were well received, but um, it isn't a hard question in that, like, all of, all of your work is is indicative of who you are as an artist. And yeah, so it's yeah. really hard to separate yourself from from your entire body of work. But, right, right. So. What is, what's some advice that you would give to uh, an emerging artist? Someone that's up and coming and they're, uh, they wanna get their career started, they wanna show in galleries. Um, um. I think the best advice that I would always give anyone is whatever you do, know your craft. Mm -hmm. You know, if you are a, uh, a musician, uh, you know, n know if a violinist, for example, know how to play the violin. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if you're a, a tradesman, uh, you know, know your, your skill, electrician or carpenter, whatever it is, know what you're doing. Mm -hmm. um, I really kind of find it interesting that if you want to become a violinist, you have to learn how to play a violin, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and you can't fake that. You can't get up on stage and just, you know, yeah. start making a lot of noise. Mm -hmm. But I find it interesting that people take liberties at calling themselves a, a painter. Mm -hmm. You know, you can just do anything. That whole range of possibilities is open, you know, so it's not like you have to have a particular skill set. It's just, you know, either out of your head or whatever, you know. Mm -hmm. So I just find that interesting. And, and my, to answer your question again is just, I think I would just pe tell people to, uh, if you're gonna be a painter, know the, the, the items that are necessary in order to be a painter. Know about value, know about color, mm -hmm. know about perspective, edges. All of that stuff is very important if you want to be uh, a successful painter, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah, and even going further into like the history of the craft that you're doing, there's a lot of information in those who have done it well be before us. Right. Um, you think about painting and photography, sculpture, um, all of that history is, uh, it, it helps you, it helps you in your, your own craft. So right, right, that's yeah. really good advice. Yeah. Um, you as an artist, ha has there ever been um, a time in your career that you've kind of questioned, you know, ha have I made the right decision? Am I, am I doing the right thing in, in, in being an artist or pursuing my, my passion? Um, well, other than the fact that, you know, I, I finally got my direction, as I mentioned before, about where I wanted to go, mm -hmm. uh, once that was out of the way, um, it's a case in which, for me at least, you paint because you want to paint. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, I always find it fascinating that I don't have a, an answer as to why I want to paint something. Mm -hmm. And uh, I always found that very curious because I think there's something to this whole thing about us artists being uh, subliminal in a lot of the way that we think about what we're doing. It's not conscious, you know, there's something that, that drives us to do the things that we do. Right. And it's interesting to see when you show your work in a gallery, 
how often people will come up to you and look at your work and, and have a whole different interpretation of what they see mm, as opposed mm -hmm. to what you thought about. Right. So I think that must be something hidden in our, in our id, mm -hmm. that we're doing something and saying something, but it's not conscious, but other people are able to see it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's so true. Is there a, a, an art movement or a, an art period that you, um, that resonates with you? Yeah, like I said, I'm, a, I'm an old uh, 19th century, uh, you know, Western paint, uh, painter. Mm -hmm. the, you know, the old masters were the ones that, that always interested me more than any other period of time. Yeah. You know, all the way up until a, probably a, the turn of the century, you know. Mm -hmm. There were a lot of American artists, Thomas Aikens and uh, George Ennis and things like that. Those guys I admired a lot. But if you go back to uh, further than that, to um, Gustav Klimt is one of my favorite guys, mm -hmm. and Johannes Vermeer, uh, Boo Girl, and you know, Vermbrandt and all those guys are, right. are my heroes. Yeah, <laughs> I can see some of that coming through your, your work. So why, why do you do what you do? Why do you love doing what, what you do? Well, I, I, I guess in a way that I feel that I have a certain talent mm. and I just feel an obligation mm. of being able to, uh, to, to produce and you shouldn't waste that. Mm -hmm. uh, it's amazing, you know, how many Mozarts there were in the world that never became Mozart mm -hmm. because they just had the talent, but they never had the interest. Yeah. You know, and I see I, people like that today, actually. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And so if you feel you have a skill, mm -hmm. I think you just have an obligation to try to, you know, use it to the fullest extent. Yeah. And I, and I think that's probably what drives me. Yeah. You just don't want to waste something that you think you have a talent to do. Right. Whether you sell or not, you know, you just do it. Yeah, I mean, I love that because we, uh, I'm used to hearing, um, you know, artists or artists or they do what they do because they just have this drive. They have this thing that they can't re really describe. Like they just have to create. Mm -hmm. um, but I like how you phrased it. It's, it's, it's a duty, it's an obligation. Like you you have this gift and you, you have to use it. Right. Um, yeah, that's, yeah, that's beautiful. I love it. Right. Um, and, and thinking about uh, uh, the, the idea of beauty, um, this is kind of a hard question because you know, beauty can be interpreted, uh, in, interpreted as uh, different things. Um, what's, what's your idea of, of, of beauty? Is that something you strive for in your work? Um, it's definitely something that comes through um, but what, what's, uh, what's your idea about beauty? Yeah, that's another great question that you asked. Uh, when I was pondering these uh, the other night in anticipation of uh, you know, today's interview, um, <clears throat> the two things that I think I could say was that, number one, this old cliche, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Mm -hmm. So that could be anything, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but in terms of, of do I approach painting in, in terms of trying to wrap my head around the concept of, of beauty? Mm -hmm. uh, the answer would be no. Mm -hmm. uh, for me, the way I really approach painting is I'm just trying to solve a problem. Mm. You know, whatever it is, whether it's a landscape or it's a outer space scene or airplane or whatever it is, I have an idea of what I want to do, and, but I've got a lot of problems I have to solve in order mm. to, to make that come true. So that's the, pretty much the way I approach it. It's just uh, it's a problem-solving exercise for me, mm -hmm. and not so much concerned about do I want to make a beautiful painting or what is beauty and how would I express it. Mm -hmm. I love that. Oh, I think I have some more questions. We'll edit this out, but I think I, mm -hmm. I, think I asked all the questions. Okay. Um, you 
Yep. All right, well, I'll do a, a close out. Well, John, thank you so much for, for meeting with me today. Thank you so much for just re revealing so much to us about who you are as an artist and uh, your process as an artist. Um, again, thank you all for, for tuning in. Uh, John Clark will, is one of, one of four featured artists that will be exhibiting in our upcoming show in October, uh, Expressions of the West Valley. It opens October 16th. Um, please visit us on westvalleyarts.org uh, to find out more information and also to reserve your spot uh, for the opening. And also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, uh, Twitter for, for news and updates. Um, again, thank you. Thank you, John. Thank you.